In this session, we're going to learn how we can flatten out the lane slopes as we approach the intersection. Just for a second, let's take a look at the current lane slopes. I'm going to select this corridor that represents the west approach, and then I'll open the section editor. Here we can see the normal inside lanes are all at 2%. If I click the arrow to step through the stations, eventually we'll see the outer lanes appear. We can see these are at the normal 3% slope, and then as I continue on, you can see how these slopes are maintained all the way to the end of the corridor, which represents the area where we enter the intersection. Let me close the section editor. What I'd like to do is have my normal slopes here at the beginning, but as I approach the intersection, I'd like all the lane slopes to flatten out to a half a percent right here along this edge, which represents the closest curb return. And then on the other side of the intersection, right here at the farthest curb return, I'd like all of my lane slopes to be at a half a percent. And then as I continue on, I would like everything to transition back to a normal crown, 2% and 3% slopes. I'm going to do that by using super elevation. Normally when we think of super elevation, we think of curves, but you can assign super elevation to any entity in your alignment. Since I'm not working with curved geometry in this case, I can leverage the super elevation tool to manually control these slopes. Now currently my alignment is being referenced into this file via a data shortcut. So to assign super elevation properties to it, I'll need to go in into the host drawing. I'll do that by selecting the alignment. I'll right click and I'll come down and choose open source drawing from the menu. Once the file's open, I'll select the file tab so I can see it on screen. And we'll then zoom out and we'll pan this over. First thing we're going to do is ensure that our alignment has a design speed assigned to it. You cannot assign super elevation to an alignment that does not have a design speed. So let me select the alignment and I'll come up and choose alignment properties. And then on the Design Criteria tab, I'll click to add a design speed. In this case, the default design speed is going to be just fine because we're going to be manually controlling these slopes. Let me come down and click OK. I will then open the Super Elevation menu and I'll choose Calculate Edit Super Elevation. I'm being told there is no Super Elevation data on this alignment currently. That's fine. I'm going to come down and click Open the Super Elevation Curve Manager. In this dialog box, I'm going to click to create a user-defined curve, and then I'll select the entity or entities in my alignment that I'd like to assign super elevation data to. In this case, the alignment is just a single straight entity. I will select that and I'll press enter. We can see that's highlighted on screen. From here, I'm going to open up super elevation curve details and I'll give this user-defined curve a name. I'm going to call this secondary street lane control. I'll press enter. I will then come down and choose tabular editor. Since I'm working with a small screen size, I'm going to drag this dialog box outside a little bit. Here we can see our super elevation curve. Now we're going to start adding some critical stations. To do that, I'll right click on the user defined curve and I'll choose add station. This takes me to the drawing. Let me pan over. I'm going to select the very first station. I'll grab the endpoint of the alignment. I will then click to expand this. We'll expand transition in region. You can see this is the station I just created. Let me click on this to get access to the text and I'm going to call this segment start. Let's create another critical station. I'm going to right click on the user defined curve and I'll choose add station. I'm going to take this down to the end and I'll grab the end point on this side. Now we can see that we have a transition out region. Let me expand this. Here's the new station that I just created. I'm going to call this segment end. I'm going to be controlling the slopes from the segment start to the segment end. Assuming we're starting with a normal crown of 2% and 3%, at some point we'll have to have a station at which the lanes start to rotate. I'm going to call this the end of normal crown. To add that critical station, I'm going to right click on transition in region and I'll choose add station. I'm going to zoom out and we'll pan this over. So I'm starting with my normal crown here. Let's keep the numbers simple. Let's come down to station 75. I'll type in 75 and press enter. We'll say this is the end of normal crown. So this is the last station where we have our typical 2%, 3% slopes. Let's add another critical station. I'll right click on transition in and I'll choose add station. Here I'm going to choose station 1 plus 75. I'll just type in 175 and press enter. This will represent where all lanes are at 2%. Let's add another station. I'll right click, add station. I will then select the station here at the closest curb return. We'll grab the end point of the curve. And here, all lanes are at 0.5%. Next, we'll take care of the transition out. I'll right click on transition out region and I'll choose add station. So we are at 5% through the intersection. We're going to take that down to the end point of this curve, which is the farthest curb return. I'll select that point. This is going to be end all lanes at 0.5%. Let's create another. Once again, keeping the numbers simple, let's go to station 475. And at this station, all lanes are at 2%. Now we're transitioning back to that normal crown. Let's add another critical station. 
Let's go to 575. This represents normal crown. Now that I've identified all of the critical stations, I can go through and enter my desired slopes. Let's drag this over. The columns that we're interested in are left inside lane, left outside lane, right inside lane, and right outside lane. These are the properties that we assign to our lanes in our corridor. Let's drag this over. So at the beginning of the alignment, let's drag this over. The left inside lane is going to be at negative 2%. The left outside lane will be at negative 3. The right inside lane will be at negative 2%, and the right outside at negative 3. Next critical station is the end of normal crown. Since it's the normal crown, it's going to have the exact same slopes. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3. The next critical station is going to be all at 2%, so I will make all of these negative 2. The next critical station is where everything is at a half a percent. So we'll make all of these negative 0.5. Now we're getting to where we're transitioning out. At this station, everybody's at a half a percent. Negative 0.5, negative 0.5. So this is where we're on the other side of the intersection. Then we transition to everybody at 2%. And then let me drag this down just to make sure we're doing this right. Now we're coming back down to the normal crown. So now the outside lanes are going to be at negative 3% and the inside lanes will be at negative 2. And then I've got this extra critical station that we put in called segment end. We'll go ahead and enter slopes here. So at the end of the alignment, we are maintaining those same slopes. So everything with respect to this alignment is being controlled in this tabular editor. When I'm finished editing my super elevation table, I'm going to click the check to close the panorama. I will then drag this dialog box over. We'll close it. Let's go ahead and save the drawing. At any point in the future, if I wanted to edit the data, I could select the alignment. I could open the super elevation menu and choose view tabular editor. I could then make any adjustments necessary. Let's close this. I'll close this drawing and we'll return to our corridor model. Here we're being told that our data references need to be synchronized. I'm going to go ahead and do that. After everything's synchronized, we'll close the panorama. I will then select this western approach and I'll choose rebuild. We'll do the same thing with the eastern approach. And then we'll check our lane slopes. I'm going to select the corridor. I'll choose section editor. Here we can see that we're starting with our normal slopes. Let me step through. Right here we can see the outside lanes showing up. Now they are starting to rotate upward until everybody is at 2%, then everything is rotating as we approach the intersection until we get to a half a percent. This is then maintained for one more station, and then we reach the intersection. Let's close this. Let's pan things over. I'll select this eastern approach. I'll choose section editor. Here we can see we're at a half a percent. Let me go forward. Here we can see the lanes rotating down until everybody's at 2%, and then the outside lanes continue to rotate until they're at 3%. When I'm finished reviewing the corridor model, I'm going to click the X to close the section editor. Now that we've flattened out the lane slopes, in our next session we'll create top surfaces for each of these approaches.